Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau, and I am so happy that you are here. So whether you are watching our show on YouTube or you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, I'm really excited for today's conversation. Um, As many of you know, part of what I do, in addition to seeing private clients and podcasting, is I run a community for other professional organizers called the SBO Partner Program. And our SBO Partner Program is made up of variety of, I think currently we have about 35 professional organizers from all over the globe that are doing amazing things in their own unique markets. And so it's a way for us to connect you, our listener, our follower, with a trusted resource, an SBO endorsed uh, professional organizer. And we've got in your neck of the woods. And we, one of the beautiful things that I love about our program is everyone's got their own unique style. We all have the same real grounding philosophy about wanting to help people live simply, work smarter, enjoy their life, maximize their space, all of those things. But everyone's got their own unique little niche. Some people specialize in moving. Some people specialize in downsizing. Some people specialize with helping busy families in playrooms. And today's guest, which I'm super excited to bring her out and share her with you, is all about closets, closet editing. And so joining me is Sarah Sailors. And Sarah runs a company called Styled by the Wave. And we're going to talk about that. Um, And she's based in Athens, Georgia. And she is just a bubble of energy. And she's a mom to a toddler. So she knows what running, like wearing that hat looks like. She also has a really interesting past. And we're going to talk about how we were originally connected because um, I didn't just meet Sarah through our SBO partner program, but many, many moons ago through my past life. And we're going to talk about that on the show. But this is going to be a really fun episode. Um, Whenever we do an episode about closet specifically. Um, It is one of our most popular ones. So I definitely think that you're in for a treat because we're going to be talking all about how to create the closet that you don't walk in there and go, I have nothing to wear, or I hate everything that's here. So if that is you, you you're going to definitely want to tune into this episode. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my friend and SBO partner, Sarah Sailors to the show. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. That was a heck of an intro. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I am too. It's funny. I, I always tell people, and um, I like to tell people, you know, I do a live intro because so a lot of times when I'm on somebody's show, they're like, okay, well, we did it. I'll read it, do it in post. And then I just kind of jump in and we start with the, you know, questions. And I like to do a live intro because I want people to know what I'm tell them about you. So you can kind of go off of that. And um, it's all true, everything I said. And so obviously you heard me just share a little bit about you, but in your own words, can you just tell people a little bit about who you are and about your business? Yes, definitely. So um, I am definitely a Southerner. I was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina and moved to Athens, Georgia for school. I went to the University of Georgia, majored in journalism um, with an emphasis in consumerism. So Um, graduated from there and I have never left Athens. I met my husband while I was in school and um, we got married in 2019 and we had our daughter 
Sutton in 2020. Um, so married, started a business and got pregnant all in 2019, all right before COVID hit. So it was pretty crazy, um, oh but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, luckily you said I'm a ball of energy and I think I am, I'm pretty hyper. Um, I like to keep things interesting. So, um, I guess if anyone's going to get married, get pregnant and start a business all the same time, I'm glad I could handle it. Cause it, it was, sounds a like something I, that sounds like something I would have done back in the day. Like, yeah. I'm just like, whatever, but you're, because you're young and you don't think about, oh my gosh, like these are three major life transitions that are happening simultaneously. You know, you just can't wait to go for it. So I'm, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> now tell everybody, cause obviously, like I said, so uh, I'll, I'll give a little precursor and then I'm want you to just share a little bit about your background. Cause I think it's super fascinating. So I mentioned at the top of the episode that, you know, I met Sarah in a different way. And so many of, you know, I was an executive recruiter for like 15 years before I pivoted my professional career and became a professional organizer. And one of my previous bosses, who's now a very, very, very dear family friend, um, is Sarah's uncle. And so my former boss, uncle Jeff, um, is a good friend of mine. And at the time when I was working for him back in the early two thousands, he had this little niece, Sarah, who was this incredible, amazing, like nationally recognized gymnast. And he used to talk about little Sarah with his, you know, his brother's son, brother's daughter, um, who was this incredible gymnast. And fast forward, Sarah grew up and is now, you know, has this incredible career. And Jeff reached out to me um, not to, you know, once you, when you started saying, Hey, do you remember my niece, Sarah, she started this business and I would love to connect you guys. And so we reconnected, even though she didn't know who I was, but I always knew who she was. Cause we followed her gymnastics career. And, um, lo and behold, now she's part of our community and I couldn't be happier, but, um, talk a little bit about that because your life was pretty interesting as a gymnast. Yes, I think I probably had as unorthodox of a childhood as you can possibly have. It was completely characterized by gymnastics. I was always that girl that did gymnastics. That's all people knew me as, really. Um, but I started when I was three years old. Um, as the story goes, um, I was watching TV and I told my parents that I wanted to do gymnastics in the Olympics one day at three years old. And I guess they took me seriously because they put me in gymnastics classes and honestly, the rest is history. I started competitive gymnastics by the age of six. Um, and from that point on, I was in the gym consistently for six days a week from um, between four and eight hours a day. Um, Sundays was my one day off and the rest of the time I was always working and just everything was always focused towards, um, Beijing 2008 Olympics was, um, my goal that I was consistently working for. So, um, I actually was homeschooled for four years so that I could train, um, between seven and eight hours a day. I did school for maybe two hours um, between practices. I had a morning practice, did some schoolwork, and then had an evening practice. Um, so just not your typical <laughs> um, upbringing. And I also lived an hour away from my gym. So um, I would get up super early in the morning, make the trip, um, I usually stayed at a friend's house or a coach's house to do my schoolwork um, in between practices and then headed back to the gym. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't ever make the Olympics. Um, I got pretty close. I uh, broke my foot right before Olympic trials in 2008. So um, I would say that was like probably that major life defining moment where um, something didn't go my way that I had worked for my entire life. I was 15 in 2008. So um, everything up to that point was, I mean, everything I ate, everything I did when I slept at night, I literally dreamed about my gymnastics routines. I mean, it was just everything to me. So when that dream ended in 2008, I kind of had to pivot and figure out, you know, what am I going to do next? So that was the first time in my life where I was like, 
all right, I got to figure out how I'm going to keep going. So I think that is like the major defining moment that really made my life take a turn. Um, But from there, I kept doing gymnastics. um, And my next goal became to get a college scholarship. So um, I ended up accomplishing that. Um, I was a four-year letterman at the University of Georgia gymnastics team. Um, They have an incredible storied history 10 national championships, 16 SEC championships. So it was a really cool program to be a part of. And I am forever grateful for that opportunity. Um, And I'm still involved in the sport. I still do commentating for SEC Network um, from time to time. And um, I stay involved doing choreography with local gyms and just mentoring some local athletes. So the sport will always have a very dear place in my heart. But yeah, I mean, it was a crazy ride. (laughs) I mean, I just think about like, I I mean, there's so many thoughts that go through my head, but I'm like, first of all, like the commitment for you and sacrifice of just so many things to be so laser focused. I have a good friend of mine and her daughter is a gymnast now in uh, University of Maryland on a scholarship. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So she graduated, she and my older daughter, they graduated. They went from kindergarten to 12th grade together and she's an incredible gymnast. And now she competes in Maryland. And, um, you know, again, I know just, she wasn't homeschooled, but I just know the, the discipline that requires and that you've had to do. I can't imagine what that, what that, when you had that injury, what that did, can you just walk us through that? Because I think even though we're here to talk about closets and we're going to absolutely talk about closets, I think there's so much, we put emphasis in so many, you know, in our, in direction and focus and dreams, wherever they are. And then when something happens to kind of shift that, that can affect so many parts of our lives. So maybe just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So you know what they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, but in the moment, it was just such a soul crushing injury. Um, you know, my life wasn't over. And I know that now my life wasn't over. Life would go on. I would be okay. I would go on to accomplish these great things. Um, I mean, now I look back and I'm like, gymnastics really was, I mean, it was fun. It was a hobby. It could have been something greater, but what it gave me was incredible. And now my greatest accomplishment is my daughter and being able to be her mom. Like that is the greatest thing in my life. But when you're 15, you're not thinking about that. So, um, I just, I can't even explain, like, just, I would wake up in the morning and it would just be like, what even is the point? Because I didn't accomplish this thing that my entire life was centered around. And it wasn't just my own um, personal goal and my personal motivation, but everyone around me, my parents were so supportive. I mean, the amount of time and effort that they spent pouring into me so that I could achieve this this thing that I wanted so badly was just incredible. And my coaches, I mean, my teachers, I had to have tutors, like they poured into me. So it didn't feel like a only a personal failure. It felt like I failed everyone around me. And when you're a teenager and things feel so insurmountable, I mean, when the boy that you like doesn't text you back, but then you have this this thing that just, you, it, you feel like your life is ruined. So like I said, it just was that first time in my life where I had to really figure out how to pivot and decide for myself, um, you know, something is going to be next. So you have to decide right now, what's that going to be? Are you just going to give up completely? Or are you going to find a new dream and go after that and find a way to make this sport um, and this setback have meaning in your life. And so, um, thankfully the support from my friends and my coaches and my family, it didn't stop when I didn't achieve, um, this huge goal that I had. Um, and I sat at home and I watched the Olympics on TV and I survived it and it was okay. And I moved on. And now, like I said, like you, you figure out what's really important. And I'm so grateful for all those lessons. And I don't think I would be who I am today if I had achieved that. Um, So even though it felt like it ruined my life in the moment, I really truly believe it made it better. 
For sure. For sure. Well, thank you for, for, you know, sharing that. Cause it's such a huge part of your story. Is, and I think yes. it's really, um, I just think it's important. And I like to know kind of where people came from. I think it's, I, I think it's just really helpful and it just makes all the more of what we do just so much more relational versus transactional. Definitely. So I want to talk a little bit about how you went from where you were to starting style by the wave. And we have to talk about the, the name too, just because it's not like Sarah Sailor's closet design. So I'm sure there's a story behind that, but how did there you is. get from, again, you graduated, you got married, had a kid, had a pandemic, all these things, started a business, all this, and just walk us through how that all came to be. Yeah. So when I graduated college, another unique thing about being a competitive gymnast is you don't get to um, have your first job when you're 16 years old because you're always at practice. So um, I graduated college and had no resume other than some volunteer work um, that I had done in school and, you know, a few things here and there, but no real job. So of course, an employer is not going to hire you if you have zero experience. So um I knew that I had this interest in fashion. Um, I had a passion for brand storytelling. Um, that's really, journalism is what I majored in, but that's really what we were learning is brand storytelling. Um, and I, social media was kind of starting to make its big boom um, within the brands. Um, so I had this idea. I sent a handwritten letter to a business owner of a local boutique here in Athens. And I said, I think that I can make your social media uh, drive sales in your store. And so I asked if I could start social media channels for her store. And I don't think I really expected her to write me back, but she did. And she hired me. So it was just like this crazy, I went out on a limb, I tried something and it worked to my surprise. And so um, that was the start of my career in social media and brand storytelling. And I did that um, for the local boutique. I moved on to doing some online merchandising and website work um, for that boutique. And then I ended up working for a real estate agency for a few years. Um, as the head of their marketing team. And then from there, I got recruited to work for a public relations agency. So I kind of got to learn that agency side of um, the business and juggling multiple brands and sharing their stories through social media for a few years. Um, and then fast forward to 2019, I got married. Um, we knew that we wanted to start a family. And so I just kind of sat down and looked in the mirror and I was like, do you want to continue to work for other people or do you want to go for it and create a job around what you're truly passionate about? And for me, that was styling, organizing. Um, and to be honest, I had no idea that there was even a job title around organizing at that time. I just was like, I have this idea. I think it might be crazy. Um, but it wasn't until after I decided to start my business that I realized there was this whole community of organizers around the country. And then I saw the show, The Home Edit, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a job. <laughs> so um, that's kind of how it came to be. I took this leap of faith before I knew it was a career. And I love one of the things that you kind of have in your official bio when I was doing the research is about how you approach. And I, I want to talk about this because I love this. When you talk about the way that you work with your clients is looking at their closet or the things that the items that are in there as part of their personal brand, not just the clothes that are in your closet. And I love that. Um, can you just talk, elaborate on that? Because I think that is so, that to me was such a light bulb when I, you know, when I was thinking about the stuff that's in my closet and the stuff that I like and the stuff that I wear and what is my brand. And so I love how you connect those dots. Absolutely. So whether you know it or not, everybody listening right now, you have a personal brand and sometimes it takes someone else to help you kind of scrape away and find what that personal brand is, but it does exist 
you have one, you have a personal style. Um, and you'd be amazed at how many people I walk in to work with them for the first time. And they're like, I have no style. I have no direction. I don't know who I am. And I'm like, you are someone, we just have to find that person and help you to really live in that. So, um, just building that personal brand to me is all about, um, first of all, figuring out what your lifestyle is. So what's your job? Do you have a family? Um, what kind of goals do you have? You know, what are you working towards? What are you hoping to achieve? Because I'm a firm believer in dressing for the life that you want to have and the person that you want to be. Um, when you wake up every morning, you have an opportunity to make that day the best day of your life. And whether it's you're just going to work and you're going to do another day at the office or it's a day off and you get to go do some fun thing with your family, the way that you dress is going to set the tone for that day. Look good, feel good, right? So um, one of my favorite things to do is kind of find out what that person's lifestyle is, what kind of things they enjoy, who they look up to, um, you know, sometimes it's a TV character, it's a celebrity, but we all admire someone's personal mm -hmm. style. And when you kind of take all those things into account, you can figure out what your personal style is, um, what you feel the most comfortable in, what you get excited about. And then the ultimate goal is to only have things in your closet that cater to that. I love it. And I'm just, and if, uh, for anybody that's watching on YouTube, I'm um, just taking notes as Sarah's talking because I, you know, for, for anybody that's been with us for a while knows that I look at clutter and organization in three main buckets, right? There's subcategories, but we talk about physical clutter, which is the stuff that you see that physical, whatever it is, clothes, dishes, laundry toys. Then you've got your calendar clutter, which is more productivity, time management, being overscheduled. And then kind of that center bucket is what I call emotional clutter. And that is the guilt, the fear that is holding you back from doing things. And I have found, and I'm wondering if you can, you know, maybe speak to this a little bit, that so much of when I work with somebody in their closet, and I'm not a stylist by any stretch of the imagination. But when I work with somebody to help them declutter and organize their closet, there's so much emotion that comes, that conjures up with it. Things from um, feeling less than shame where, oh, I used to fit into these jeans or I used to work in corporate and I had this, you know, this was my previous life or all of these things. So there's all this emotion that kind of weighs into them or, I spent a lot of money on this and I don't like the way it looks on me, but I spent money on it. So I should hold on to it. So you're holding on to it for the wrong reasons. And every time you look at it, it's just a reminder of something that you did. And so I think really understanding that whole emotional component of why people are holding on to these things um, is a part of your job, whether you you know, set off as that as part of the intention or not. And I'm wondering in your experience, how you see that play out in the way that you work with your clients. Yeah. So it's funny. I think as an organizer, I'm sure all organizers experience this to some degree, but you become a little bit of a therapist. Um, so you're working through the emotions of just like you said, items that maybe upset you because you feel like you should fit into that or items that hold some sentimental memory and you just can't let go of it because it reminds you of something or items that you bought as um, a goal. I mean, it's so common for people to buy something and say, I'm going to be able to wear this by this date. Um, and that's something that uh, I really try to encourage people to let go of. Um, there's so much freedom in just living in the present. And of course, that's something that is a personal journey and you have to, you know, work through that in your own way and in your own time. But the freedom that you have when you're able to just live for the now and let go of past and let go of, I want to be this person in the future there's just so much freedom in that. So something that we do um, is when we're organizing a closet, we make three different piles. So we have a yes pile, 
yes, I love this. This makes me feel great. I get excited to wear this. I'm definitely keeping this in my closet. Number two is the no pile. This no longer serves me. I think this is ugly. I don't know why I bought this. Um, this is damaged. I don't need to keep this. So we have the no veto pile. Then we have the maybe pile. So um, there is a place for things in your closet that you can't re wear right in that moment. Maybe it's maternity. Um, maybe it's an evening gown that you have to pull out once every year or two years, um, but you're not wearing constantly. Um, something like that. So we have the maybe pile, um, but a great way that I found to help people work through that emotion and hold on to things that maybe mean something to them or that they're hopeful about without keeping it in their closet to really tug at their hearts every time they walk in is to have a memory box or just a, a place where you can fold items up, tuck them away in the box, keep them in another room out of sight, but you know that they're in there. So you're not fully letting go, but you're not walking into a space where you see those pants that you can't wear right now and you get angry every morning. <laughs> so it's kind of a compromise. And I found that that's super helpful. Um, I've even had clients create what they like to call a legacy box. So items that make them really happy are sentimental um, that they've held on from their grandparents or their parents and they want to pass down to their children in the future. So it doesn't have a place in their wardrobe closet at the moment, but it's something that they want to hold on to for legacy purposes. I love it. And we do a similar approach as well. We call, you know, our relocate in our memorabilia pile. And I think, you know, so it, a lot of times people will think if it's clothing, it belongs in the closet. And I understand that, but if you have your, you know, your uniform from when you were competing in Georgia or whatever it was, just because it's closed, like you're not wearing that now, I would think. So, you know, but that's something that you might want to hold on to. And so that would go into your legacy box. And I love that. I think it gives people freedom to know that they have this other space that they can do without having to necessarily completely get rid of things. Now, um, another thing that I want to talk about is so how do you like let's talk about how well I want to let me let me go back for a second I have too many things in my head right now so when you're working with clients that are going through life transitions so you're a young mom so I'm sure you are also working with other people who are in similar seasons to you you know so maybe whether they're in between sizes or they're maybe going back to work but not going back to work they don't know what they're going to be doing how do you, what's your advice to somebody that's listening out there that might be in that type of a scenario where they're still very transitional? Yeah, definitely. So um, my best advice is when you are shopping, buy for now. Um, when you're adding pieces to your closet, try to take the future out of it. Um, but also be smart about it. So if you, like for me personally, I hope to be growing our family um, over the next couple of years. So one thing that I'm avoiding when I go shopping right now is purchasing um, premium denim because you just, I mean, it's just not something that's going to serve me over the next couple of years, God willing. Um, I'm not going to be wearing pants that zip and button. So I'm not going to spend $200 on that brand new pair of jeans that I'm hopefully going to fit into, but probably not. So to really try to keep in mind um, the here and the now, um, one thing that we work through a ton is pieces um, that you can add to your wardrobe that will serve you through life changes. So whether you're on a weight loss journey, you're postpartum and you're hoping to lose weight, or you're like me and you're hoping to grow your family again soon, pieces that are going to serve you now and through all of those transitions. So um, a great example is avoiding buying a lot of pants and going more for dresses. Um, luckily, those are something that are super in style right now. So um, if you can kind of build a rotation of really pretty dresses that you feel great in that have that A-line fit and are going to serve you through multiple stages, um, focus on those things instead of focusing on the things, oh darn, I can't wear those right now. Um, so yeah, just staying really present, staying in the now um, and 
just being joyful in that. I mean, how exciting if you are going through a life change. Um, I mean, it's hopefully positive, but just trying to find joy in that um, moment is so important. I love it. We're going to take a break and then I'm going to come back and I have a two, two really important questions that I think are going to really touch on another of the emotional piece with when it comes to kind of styling your closet. So we'll be right back, everybody. So sit tight. All right. So as you were talking, there were a couple things that kind of popped into my mind. And one of them is with regard to people that maybe don't feel good about themselves and trying to identify that brand of when you are, you know, in a place where maybe, like you said, you're not in the shape that you want to be in, maybe life has handed you because of career, maybe you're not where you want to be, you know, in terms of whatever your life cycle is. Um, And so a lot of times, like you said, we reflect the way that we dress based on, you know, if you're feeling blah, doesn't mean you have to dress blah, but a lot of times we do, you just kind of maybe throw on those sweats or whatever. So I'm wondering how you help people that might be in a little bit of a rut That would be the first thing. And then the second part of the question, um, or the second question is really, if somebody's like, I don't know what my brand is, you know, again, really trying to help them. And you touched on it earlier, but I really want to dive in a little bit deeper into helping them kind of figure that out. Some of the things that they can do at home. Yeah. So we have all been there. We've all been in the rut where we get up in the morning and we're like, oh, great. Here we go. Another day. Got to find something to wear. What am I going to do? And the heart of Styled by the Wave, so much of the brand stems from that feeling of being in a rut. So um, as a college gymnast, um, I dealt a lot with disordered eating, weight fluctuation, not feeling comfortable in my own skin. And of course, as a gymnast, you're wearing a leotard um, all week. And then when you compete, um, you're in a coliseum in front of 10,000 fans in practically a swimsuit. I mean, it's a tiny piece of stretchy fabric and um, it's daunting. It can feel so uncomfortable, especially when you don't feel like your best self. Um, And so that relates to going out in the world. Maybe it's going to your job. Maybe it's um, showing up for family or friends and you just don't feel like your best self in that moment. Um, But the really cool thing about clothing is you can make it work for you. So we're not going out and trying to buy clothing and make it fit ourselves. We're buying clothing that fits us. Mm -hmm. So you have the power to go out and find something that does make you feel really good. And maybe it's not the ideal um, little tiny black dress that you um, want to be wearing in that moment, but there still is a really pretty black dress that you can purchase that you put on and you're going to feel like a million bucks. So it's all about being able to find things that you feel like you would look really good in, then trying them on, not getting discouraged, but trying them on and finding something that makes you feel great. And then I love being able to help clients manipulate that clothing to make it them and to help them find their personal brand. So anybody can go out and find a black dress that they want, but not everybody is going to wear that black dress in the same way. So it's all about accessorizing, adding a belt, picking the shoe that's your mood. So some people may wear a thigh high boot with the black dress and some people may be like, whoa, that is too much pump the brakes. Let me try a really cool (laughs) fashion sneaker. So it's all about, I was just going to say, I'd be like in Chuck Taylors. I'd be, or motorcycle boots. That would be, yes. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So clothing is meant to be manipulated and played with. I mean, you're playing dress up really every day when you get up, you're playing dress up and you're putting on the things that make you feel the most like yourself um, and having fun with it. I mean, it's just, it, it really is when you were a little kid and you ran into your mom and said, look, mom, my pretty princess dress. Like now you're getting dressed in the morning and you're running out into the world and saying, look at me, I'm going to conquer this day. And it's, it really is hard. I understand it's hard sometimes when you don't feel your greatest, 
But if you just keep plugging away and getting up and putting something on that makes you feel good every morning, slowly but surely, you're going to find your way back and really be able to own that personal brand that you're creating. I love it. Now, what about volume? So a lot of people, and it's, it's obviously it's going to depend on your space, right? Because I get a lot of questions about, should I, you know, take my clothes out seasonally? Should I do this? What are the, and I don't believe in a one size fits all approach, just in any type of organizational thing. I think you got to figure out the system that works for you. Um, and you also have to figure out what your space can accommodate. I think in a perfect world for me, I'd like to see what's current rotation only in the closet, right? So you go, I'm not going to be looking at summer stuff. I live in the Northeast. So I'm not going to be having a little maxi dress in my closet right now because I don't even need to see it. I'm not wearing it. And it's only going to make me dream of warmer, warmer spaces. Um, but I, I'm curious what your approach is, even once you identify your personal brand in terms of thinning out how much you should have of each item. Yeah, what absolutely. Your, yeah. yeah. So, um, key rule number one is I always, always encourage people to only have items in their closet that they actually love. And that goes back to that emotional part. And it, you really have to work through it, but over time, um, it gets easier and easier to let things go that just don't serve you. So once you really pare down and only have things in your closet that are serving you, that are functional, that make you happy, you can start to really hone in and build that personal brand. So my recommendation is always um, to have a color coded closet um, so that you can kind of see how much you have of each color. So it's amazing when we work with a client and we color code for the first time, you'll hear them say, oh my gosh, I own so much red. I don't even like red that much. Why do I have so much red? And so when you have this color-coded space, it kind of gives you more clarity around what you actually like and what you actually need so that you're not going out to a store and buying another red sweater that doesn't truly make you happy. It was just on sale and you're like, oh, I could wear this. So it's focusing in on what actually makes you happy. And then from there, it's, understanding that you don't need an abundance of items to have a really well-rounded wardrobe. I always recommend people to build a great foundation of basics. And then from there, start adding maybe two to three pieces um, at a time of trendier items that they really enjoy and are drawn to. So trends come and go. We all know how quickly fashion moves. Um, mm -hmm. We're already looking at what's going to be popular in 2023. And it's been 2022 for just a short period of time. Yeah. So as quickly as our culture moves, you have to just keep in mind I don't need to buy every trend that's on the market right now and have that in my closet because it's not going to serve me for a long time. So that goes back to knowing what you actually like and only buying the things that you love and keeping it to a minimum. So in terms of numbers, um, I, I believe that you don't need more than five pairs of jeans. You don't need more than five pairs of work trousers and you don't need more than five great coats. Um, there's only so many days in the week and you can only wear your clothes so much. So having, you know, 10 pairs of denim isn't really important, right? So you might as well get a few pairs of denim that you really love that is going to fit you great. And then use that clothing budget that you have to purchase other items that maybe are trendier you're going to really get some great use out of for a few seasons and then you can kind of move on. Um, I think we also live in a culture where it's like more, 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 I have to have the next best thing and kind of moving away from that mindset and also getting comfortable with outfit repeating. It's okay to wear the same outfit more than once. I actually am wearing an outfit today that I recently um, met with a client and, and it's totally okay. I think the age of Instagram has made us feel like you can only be seen in an outfit one time. And that's just 
crazy. Um, and I think if we all just decide, hey, it's okay to rewear things and rework things, um, we'd all be better off. I also think, well, thank you for saying that because I agree. Um, and I also think nobody really, like, I don't remember unless it's something super like wild and bold, right? That's that, that's a super big statement piece. I don't remember what somebody else is wearing. Like, I don't remember, like if you were like, I'm, I can tell you right now, I've worn the shirt on other podcast episodes. So people that watch me on YouTube, they've seen this shirt before, but like, I don't pay that much attention to go, Oh, I saw her wearing that same black shirt or those are the same jeans that she wore like I don't I just don't think that most people and maybe that's me but I think we put more emphasis on what people are paying attention to than what they actually are oh you're totally right no one is paying as much attention to you as you're paying to yourself um, and if we can let go of that notion that oh my gosh they're gonna notice what are they going to say? Like, it's, that's another thing. I mean, I'm all about living in freedom, living yeah. in less clutter, living with less worries about what other people think. It's just, I want to live in freedom with peace of mind. <laughs> Amen, sister. Now, let me ask you another kind of tactical question. How often do you recommend to your clients they go through and obviously when you're doing it for the first time with a client, it's like probably a deep dive, like you would do with any other, you know, organizational space. But then once you have that initial system set up, kind of, do you have a rule of thumb of how often you should be revisiting it? Should it be seasonally? Should it be annually? What do yeah, you think? So it, what do you recommend? it should be at least twice a year, at least twice a year, you should be going in your closet, um, taking inventory, recognizing, oh, I haven't worn this in the last six months. It's probably time to let it go. Um, so yes, every six months, at least, I think everyone should be doing that. Um, most of my clients, I revisit seasonally. Um, and it's not always that we're going in and eliminating more items. Um, it just might be that we're going in and kind of having a little bit of a refresher on how to wear things for that season. So by the time summer comes around and you've been wearing pants and coats for four months, you're like, wait, how in the world do I style this dress? I don't remember. So kind of having that refresher styling session um, every season um, is really helpful for people to feel like they're still on top of their game and putting their best foot forward every day that they walk out of the door. I love it. Which leads me to the next question, which we didn't talk about. And we're coming towards the end of the episode is I'm so curious about the name of your company. So talk to us a little bit about what that means, how you came up with that. Yes. So um, my last name, Sailor's, um, is so funny that I married and became a sailors because I have always found the most peace and happiness on the water on a boat. Um, all of my friends know that I joke about one day I will own a yacht. That is like <laughs> my ultimate, ultimate goal. I just, if I had like the craziest dream and the craziest goal, it would be that one day I'm going to own a yacht and I'm going to take all my friends with me and we're going to sail the world. So, um, that's kind of like the laughing joke of, um, our family and our friends. But, um, yeah, I've just always been so at peace on the water and just staring out at the waves. And that kind of brings me back to center. Um, I think we all have that thing that kind of brings you back and grounds you. And for me, it's the water. Um, so it's just kind of funny that my last name became Sailors. And also the wave is so significant to me. Um, if you think about it, when you stand at the foot of the ocean and you're watching the waves roll in, there's no two waves that are the same. There's huge waves. There's little tiny ones. There's ones that come in crooked. None of them are the same. But the entire time that we stand at the ocean and we watch those waves roll in, we stand there in awe and we're like, wow, look at creation. This is so beautiful. I feel so peaceful in this moment. And I just think that we have to kind of go about life and looking at people in the same way. 
there are no two people that are the exactly the same. We all have different backgrounds, different body types, um, different interests. We're on different paths, but if we can just enjoy that we're all different and appreciate that and give people respect and look to people in that way, then I think not only are we going to be internally more happy, but the world immediately becomes a more happy place just out of all that respect that we have for each other. So um, the wave really to me is this resemblance of no two people being the same, but everybody being able to live their best life and put their best foot forward every day. And with that comes like the fluctuation that we've talked so much about throughout this episode is the fluctuation, you know, life ebbs and flows, our bodies ebb and flow, seasons come and go, life changes, but um, how awesome that we can always come back to um, something as simple as getting dressed every morning and finding joy in that little daily task and feeling really good about ourselves or as good as we possibly can every single morning. I love it. I, I think that's like a mic drop. It's a, such a great place to kind of bring this whole episode full circle. So, and such wisdom from such a, like, I feel like I'm old enough to be your mom. So I'm like, oh. from such a young person. Um, well, thank you. All right. So I absolutely, everyone knows I absolutely adore you. Obviously, you're part of our community. You, we endorse you. We promote you. And you can find everything that Sarah is doing on our website. But tell everybody who's listening right now, where can they find you, connect up with you if they want to learn more about your services and what you're doing? Now's your time. Plug away, sister. <laughs> Yes. So come join me on Instagram. Um, we are growing the community over there. It's like a big best friend group where we talk about clothing and trends and outfit ideas. So we have a lot of fun over there. It's at by the underscore the wave by underscore the wave on Instagram. And then um, I share a lot of my favorite things um, that I found uh, products um, looks that I recommend, clothing pieces I recommend over on Like to Know It. So if you download the Like to Know It app, um, you can find me at like to know it slash Sarah Sailors. And then um, if you do go follow me on Instagram, click the link in the bio and join me on my email list. Um, I send out, um, we call it the weekly wave and I share lots of free outfit ideas, tips, insider information. Um, it's kind of like getting all of my services wrapped up into a nice, pretty newsletter for free. So um, that is another great way to stay connected. I love it. And for anybody that's new to our show, we will include links to everything Sarah said in our show notes. It'll So you don't have to worry about writing it down. You'll We'll have links to sign up for her newsletter and like to know it, Instagram, website, all the things. So we are going to take one more very brief break. We're going to come back and we're going to put you in the hot seat for our wrap up questions. So sit tight. All right, Sarah, this has been such a great conversation. And I, people were watching, I was literally just taking notes. So many, th so many great, just pearls of wisdom. And I'm just really excited to let everybody listen to this and really hopefully take some action steps to feel good about their spaces and really show the world who their personal brand is through the stuff that is in their closet. So I love it. Um, we're all about honesty, authenticity on our show. You've inspired us. So we would like to know what's a book that in your life that has inspired you, something that is maybe something that you go back to or that you recommend to other people, something that has left a lasting impact. Hands down, The Most Powerful Woman in the Room is You by Lydia Finette. Ooh. It is incredible. It will motivate you beyond belief. I mean, it's one of those books where I read it and I wanted to run through a brick wall. Like it's just wow. incredible. Everyone needs to read it. The most powerful woman in the room is you. All right. I'm so excited because when we're done, I'm going to go buy it. And yes. <laughs> yes. So we will include that as well in our show notes. And then even though you appear to have it all together, and I'm sure you do, Everybody has some area of their life in this particular season where that you might be struggling, feeling like a little bit of a hot mess. So tell us where 
you feel like you are thriving in the most organized? And where do you feel like you're still a little bit of a work in progress, right? In this particular season? Oh my gosh. So it is my home that I feel the most organized and it is my home that I feel the most unorganized. <laughs> so I, um, I think that I have a healthy amount of OCD. <laughs> um, I, everything has a place. There is systems in every room. Um, my sweet, sweet husband has adapted to all my systems. He knows how to put the groceries away the way that I like. He knows how to load the dishwasher the way that I like. He is just the best. Um, um, so my home is just, I cannot go to sleep at night if everything is not put away and perfectly organized. Um, but as you mentioned, I do have a toddler. And so it is just constant that I am picking up after her and trying to clean up the little messes. You know, there's food on the ground. I found milk splashed up against the wall the other day um, that dried up before I even knew that it was there. So it's, I'm really learning how to embrace the mess in this season and understand that this too will pass. And it's just the joys of having little tiny feet running all over the house. <laughs> It is so true. And I was literally going to say it's that embracing. And I remember many, many years ago being in the same, feeling the same way where I like that order. I like that structure. And, you know, even just changing, like, I get to do this. It's such a privilege. But in that it moment, is a privilege, yes. <laughs> but in that moment, when you're tired and you just want things, I know what that's like. So, enjoy it. And again, as you're in the season of growing your family, you know, you're in it for a little while, but, uh, enjoy. And I'm excited. Exactly. I I will embrace and I will enjoy. (laughs) Exactly. And listen, she'll grow up and learn to color code and she'll drink the Kool-Aid. If I have anything to do with it, she will know how to keep her room clean and her closet color coded. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of This Organized Life. If you haven't already, make sure that you click the subscribe button, follow, like, and share this. We just love growing our community. If you're on Facebook, we do have a Facebook group called This Organized Life Podcast. You can post questions, comments, Um, head on over to Instagram where it's simply be organized. And um, We just want to keep bringing you great content. So keep on in touch with us. And until next week, I'm Lori Palau. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love by sharing it with your friends. And if this is your first time tuning in, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so that you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. Head on over to YouTube and make sure that you follow us there as well. We record interviews, videos, and conversations with all of our guests. And again, if you want to learn more about our product offerings, feel free to visit us at simplybeorganized.com where you can connect.